Hello, my name is Derek Sullivan and I am the Director of Undergraduate Teaching and Learning as well as being a Professor in Microbiology here in the School of Dental Science in Trinity College Dublin. And what I'd like to do for the next 20 minutes or so is give you an overview of all of the undergraduate programmes that we provide here in the School of Dental Science and in the Dublin Dental University Hospital. I'm guessing you wouldn't be joining this session if you weren't interested in becoming a dental professional. But what does that entail? I think you need to be interested in people. For the rest of your career, you will be dealing on a regular basis with patients. And these patients come from a wide range of backgrounds and will have a wide range of oral health conditions. You'll also be working with your team. Your team will consist of the dentist, the dental nurse, the dental hygienist, the dental technologist, as well as perhaps other members of your staff, for instance, the receptionist, cleaners, and things like that. You need to have an interest in human health, because although we will train you extensively in oral, the oral cavity and all its health and diseases, we have to obviously include in that the rest of the human body, because of course, teeth and the mouth do not live separately from the rest of the body. You have to have an interest in interacting with other professionals, particularly from the healthcare area, so people like general medical practitioners, occupational therapists, physiotherapists perhaps you might have dealings with as well. You might want to have an experience of variation of work. Every day for a dental practitioner or any of the professional members of the team is different. We're lucky that dentists have the ability to be flexible in their work conditions and that nowadays Dentists can open at weekends or work in the evening. But most of all, you want to get involved in a career that is rewarding. And dentistry provides that. It is, without a doubt, a challenging career, but it's certainly rewarding. And at the end of the day, what we're interested in doing is making people smile, just like the one you can see here on the right of the slide. So as I've already mentioned, who are this dental team? The, the other dentist, the dental technician, the dental nurse, and the dental hygienist and we provide training for all of these members of the team here in the school and hospital. At the end of the day all of these people contribute to miracles like this taking a slide or taking a patient with a condition like this and transforming their lives to give them a dentition like this. You can imagine the quality of life of this patient will have been improved dramatically by the treatment that the dental team will have provided for them. So the courses that we provide are a two-year diploma in dental nursing, a two-year diploma in dental hygiene, a three-year ordinary degree in dental technology, and then a five-year degree in dental science, after which you'd be qualified to practice as a dentist. We also have a diploma program in orthodontic therapy. However, this is only open to people who already have a qualification in either dental nursing or dental hygiene. So I'm not going to talk about that anymore today. This is a picture of the Dublin Dental Hospital, or as it's more formally known, the Dublin Dental University Hospital. This is a, an old institution that has been present at this site since the late 1800s, but was fully refurbished approximately 20 years ago and is now a state-of-the-art dental hospital. It's located on the Trinity campus, on Lincoln Place, right beside the Lincoln Gate at the rear end of the college. You can see here with, in that purple circle. It's perfectly located close to other academic departments in the, in the university. We're very close to the Trinity Biomedical Sciences, Sciences Institute where anatomy teaching takes place. We're beside physics and chemistry and microbiology and physiology, all of whom help with the training of our students, particularly in dental science. The dental hospital is a fully working hospital and the school is a major component of the dental hospital. As a school where we train all of those members of the dental profession, we have two lecture theatres and we have a wide range of seminar rooms. Perhaps one of the most important parts of the hospital is the clinical skills lab. This is where students, particularly dental science and dental hygiene students, learn how to do simple dental procedures 
before they're allowed to practice these on live patients. So students are trained to do simple restorations, like fillings, extractions, root canals, on these mannequin heads. And once they've shown to be competent in being able to carry out those procedures on a mannequin head, or a phantom head, as they're sometimes called, they then are able to go to the clinic and conduct these on real live patients. The dental clinics are state of the art and very modern. There is one dental chair available per dental science student. And we're very proud of the high level of clinical activity that all of our students are exposed to while they're here in the hospital. Our graduates are seen around this country and neighboring countries as being second to none. Also in the hospital, we have a staffed dental library. Throughout much of your course, you may spend time in the libraries in Trinity, which are a fantastic resource. But later in your course, where you may be more interested in more dentally specific literature, you will find everything that you need here in the library situated at the top of the dental hospital. We provide training for all members of the dental team and we provide training whether at undergraduate or postgraduate level across all of the dental specialties ranging from oral surgery to endodontics to prosthodontics, special care dentistry, dental public health. There's a high degree of integrated training between all of the specialties because as members of the dental team you'll be working together in the future it makes sense that where it's appropriate dental science students, dental nursing students and dental hygiene students and technology students learn together. You'll be taught by a range of, of staff who are clinically very skilled, but also by some staff who are recognized internationally for their research, particularly in areas such as material science, microbiology, special care dentistry, dental public health, etc. Some students, if they wish, may get the opportunity to work on bespoke research projects by the time they are here. For dental science students in fourth year, all students undertake a large dental public health research project. And for the final year, all students are required to complete a research dissertation as part of their Trinity capstone project. So now to tell you a little bit more, more about each course specifically. So first of all, the Diploma in Dental Nursing. This is a QQI level seven program, and each year we take in 25 dental nursing students. To get onto the course, you need to take six leading search subjects, and one of which must be English, another mathematics, and then one of the sciences. Two of those must be a standard of at least a grade four. You must also undergo and pass Garda vetting, and you must also show us that you are, have been protected against a number of infectious diseases, particularly hepatitis B. This is the same for all healthcare professions. So the Diploma in Dental Nursing entails, as I said, it's a two-year program. You spend a lot of your time on the clinics, and I'll tell you a little bit more about those placements in the next slide. And during all of that clinical placement, you'll be continually assessed and you'll be graded each week. The clinical teaching is complemented by lectures, tutorials, practical classes, and seminars. And as I said, the lion's share of the time will be spent on clinical placements, mainly throughout the dental hospital, in surgeries like the day theatre, like the restorative clinics, like accident and emergency, oral surgery, or in the clinical sterile services department. You might also spend some time in general dental practices, HSC dental clinics, and in the special oral health care clinics in St. James's Hospital and St. Vincent's Hospital. So what are the career progression routes within the dental nursing profession? Once you graduate with your diploma, of course, you're qualified to work as a dental nurse under the supervision of a registered dentist. Within a practice, you can become a clinic nurse manager, ultimately rising to become a practice manager, perhaps. You may leave clinical dentistry altogether and become a sales rep or a marketing representative for an oral health care um, provider. You could become an academic, you could become a nurse tutor or a lecturer in some of the institutions around the country that provide training for dental nurses. Now onto the Diploma in Dental Hygiene. This too is a QQI Level 7 programme. Each year we take in eight students, but in order to be taken onto the course, you must first of all submit a questionnaire. 
So whereas you might have attended a dentist before and been treated by a dentist, maybe being assisted by a dental nurse, you may not have been to a hygienist. So what are dental hygienists and what do they do? First of all, they have to be registered by the Dental Council. So they are registered dental professionals. And they help maintain good oral health in patients by a whole wide range of different procedures. One of these is cleaning and polishing teeth. Another is preventing and treating periodontal disease. These are the diseases where the gums become inflamed because of bacterial growth. Dental hygienists can also take radiographs when they've been sufficiently trained. And they also play a very important role in promoting good oral health in the population. And all of these procedures are carried out under the supervision of a registered dentist. Like, dent like dental nursing, it's a two-year program. Again, there's continuous assessment of all the time that you spend on the clinic. And similarly, you attend lectures, tutorials, practical seminars, and clinical placements in all of the various appropriate clinics in the hospital and outside of the hospital. The requirements are similar in terms of six leading search subjects, including English, maths, and one of the sciences, two of which must be at level four. There's guard abetting and the vaccination requirement is the same as before. So what can you do? As I've already said, you perform the treatments, you can be, get involved in promotion of oral health, lead oral health awareness campaigns mediated by the HSE, and get involved in pr providing presentations to community groups, schools, and things like that to ensure that the population engages in good oral hygiene practices. So in terms of career prospects, of course, the vast majority of graduates end up working as hygienists. They can also become researchers and lecturers. They can become corporate educators. They can become sales and marketing representatives, or they can become involved in the HSC in developing and applying community health programs. Dental technology. This is a small course. Each year we take in six students. It is also QQI level seven, but it is a three year ordinary degree for a bachelor's in dental technology. And again, like dental hygiene, there's a requirement to complete and submit a specific questionnaire before you'll be accepted onto the course. The requirements to enter into the program include, again, six leading search subjects, including English, maths, and one of the sciences. And again, two of these must be at at least grade four on the ordinary leading search papers. There's the same blood-borne vaccination requirement. So as I mentioned, it's a three-year full-time program. There was a lot, as you can imagine, practical hands-on experience. It is dental technology after all. Increasingly in recent years, we have introduced a lot of training in computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacture. There's also a possibility to attend an Erasmus exchange at the second or third year of the program. So what do dental technologists do? Well, they're the people who generate these, the crowns, the bridges, the dentures, the orthodontic appliances that you might have had, or still have perhaps, these are all created by dental technologists. So in terms of what the career entails, you will be working in a laboratory, making these um, products. You may be self-employed, you could work in a wider laboratory. Um, you would work under the prescription of a dentist, but you could also have some interaction with patients and have chair side delivery of your work to the patient. Now on to the degree in dental science. So this is a QQI level eight program. And each year we take in 32 students via the CAO, as well as 18 students from overseas. And at the end of the five years, you're awarded a bachelor's in dental science. So the basic entry requirements are H3, H4 in two of the sciences. If you don't have a qualification in physics, you must pre present with mathematics at either O5 or H6. Competition for places in dentistry is very high. You also would be required to undergo guard vetting and have evidence for your, your, vac your vaccinations against diseases such as hepatitis B before entering onto the program. So as I mentioned, it's a five-year full-time program. The first year is spent very much getting everybody up to the same level. People are coming from different parts of the world, from different courses, 
and we want to make sure that everybody has the same level of basic sciences, basic physics and chemistry, microbiology, biochemistry, physiology, as well as being introduced to basic oral biology. In first year, you don't treat your own patients, but you do get to observe patients in practice, in the clinics, in the dental hospital. However, by second year, the level of oral biology and dentistry increases dramatically. And in second year, you do attend clinic. Once a week, you will attend a clinic and start treating patients towards the middle of the year, doing fairly simple procedures like simple restorations and root canals. However, as the time progresses, the amount of dentistry increases and the amount of didactic teaching decreases. So, what, so that by the end of the five years, the vast majority of your time is spent on the clinic, learning the various skills that a dentist requires. So what do you do as a dentist? Of course, the vast majority of people qualifying with a degree in dental science work as dentists, where they will lead the dental team and deliver oral healthcare treatments and plans for their patients. We cover all areas of dentistry in the program. So you will be practicing on children with pediatric dentistry, restorative dentistry, special care dentistry. The course is recognized throughout the European Union, but also in Canada. The teaching involves a whole range of different procedures. We like to mix things up, so including lectures and small group teaching, and I'll come back to the small group teaching in a moment. There are also, of course, practical laboratory sessions, particularly in first and second year, there are laboratories in physics, chemistry, biochemistry, microbiology, and physiology. There's continuous assessment throughout, whether it's in the clinics or in the lab. Throughout your course each year, you will probably have at least one or two projects in which you will have the opportunity to make oral presentations to your class and to other members of staff, perhaps. And then there may be research opportunities in fourth year and fifth year. Now, I mentioned small group learning. The dental science program is an integrated program. We're not modular. We don't separate out different subjects. We try and make sure they're integrated because, of course, the oral cavity is a complex environment that is closely integrated with the rest of the body. One way we think that is a good way of teaching dentistry is problem-based learning. This is quite different, to, different from the teaching that perhaps you may receive at school. It's different from receiving lectures. Problem-based learning is self-directed learning, where students take on board for themselves the ability to problem-solve and direct their own learning. This is helpful for the future because well, we can train you for dentistry in 2025 or 2026. However, if you're practicing dentistry for the next 40 or 50 years, the landscape will change dramatically. Dentistry will be a very different type of science in the second half of the 21st century. So problem-based learning helps in training you to critically appraise knowledge and to be able to continue your learning long after you leave the dental school and hospital. It helps your problem-solving proficiency, it helps your communication skills, and it helps your team participation skills. But it does put responsibility on the student. At school and in lectures, the responsibility is largely on the teacher or the lecturer to provide the knowledge. With problem-based learning, a lot of that responsibility is put on the shoulders of the student. PBL works in small groups of eight to 10 students, and those students sit around a table in first and second year three times a week, reviewing a topic, discussing what they know about it, and generating learning goals. And it's basically run by the students themselves with a chairperson and a secretary who takes notes. There is a tutor present. They may or may not be an expert in the topic that's being discussed, but they're there to facilitate the discussion, but not to lead the discussion. Part of the degree, there's an opportunity in fourth year to attend Erasmus exchanges for a term with uh, the universities in Oslo, in Sweden, and in the University of Leeds in the UK. There's also voluntary electives in fourth year. The students undergo volunteering in various parts of the world, which is directed by themselves. Once you graduate, the vast majority of dentists go on to practice dentistry in the community. However, many dentists want to specialize, and there are lots of postgraduate opportunities here 
in the School of Dental Science in Trinity College. Basically, there are postgraduate opportunities for DCH dentists or clinical doctorates and PhDs in all of the dental specialties. If you're interested in applying to dentistry, please don't hesitate to contact the academic registry in Trinity College. My advice, one piece of advice, if anybody's interested in any of these programs, is perhaps you should consider asking your own dentist, would it be possible for you to shadow them for a day or two to get an idea of what the dental nurse does or what the dentist does on a day-to-day -day basis so that you know when you choose this challenge, these challenging programs, you know what you're getting into. There's no doubt that dentistry is a rewarding career. It's challenging. The courses are rewarding and challenging. I very much look forward to seeing you here in the dental school in the near future, and I wish you the very best of luck for the future. Thank you and goodbye.